Can all women squirt? This is such a difficult question to answer. And in short, yes, probably. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you once and for all what you need to know about one of the most elusive and mysterious aspects of human sexuality. The mystery, the art, the science of female ejaculation. There's so much conflicting information on the internet, it can make your eyes cross. In this video, I'm gonna answer the following questions. What is female ejaculation? aka squirting, and can every woman do it? And then last, but certainly not least, how do I make a woman squirt? So let's quickly get the first one out of the way. What happens when a woman squirts? Well, squirting is the expulsion of fluid through the urethra, often but not always accompanied by a G-spot orgasm. And while the exact science here is still a mystery, this fluid is believed to come from the skein's gland, sometimes called the female prostate, I don't know if I agree with that naming, but it's located near the urethral opening. This gland is capable of producing a fluid that is kind of similar to prostate fluid in men. The exact composition and amount of fluid can vary widely from person to person, as can the amount of fluid that comes out. No, it's not pee, but sometimes it can have pee in it. So again, difficult to answer questions. As for who can squirt, we've all heard women divided into categories of squirter and non-squirter, right? And after 20 years of experience in the field of sex education and coaching, as well as a much longer time living as a bisexual woman, I believe that pretty much all women are capable of squirting. If you have the parts, you are likely to be capable of having the same biological response. It is pretty much as simple as that. Now, some women definitely have a much easier time squirting than others. Some squirt like they, they didn't even train, they just came out that way and that's how their bodies are. Think of it like a regular orgasm. Although the anatomy is more or less the same when you break it down, all women have specific things that help their bodies to get to that orgasmic finish. And what works for one may not work for another. Now, when it comes to squirting, one of the most important things to understand is that there are both physical and psychological factors that are either allowing her to squirt or getting in the way of it. Physically, the ability to squirt is linked to stimulation of the G-spot, which is the spongy area located in the vagina along the front wall. And different women react differently to different types of stimulation. It's all about figuring out what works for your specific partner and her G-spot. And I don't even wanna hear the debate on like whether the G-spot is real. Like just take your anecdotally, like it doesn't matter. We're missing the point, G-spot, no G-spot. If it feels good at that spot, great, amazing. Now onto the psychological element. And this is something that is so often ignored and yet it plays a huge role in squirting and who can and do it with ease and who can't. Comfort, relaxation, and a positive attitude towards exploring one's body are critical. Anxiety, tension, or negative beliefs about one's sexuality can stop her from experiencing pleasure and orgasming completely. And it can definitely stop you from having a shot at squirting. Creating a safe, comfortable, and open environment for sexual exploration is key. Lots of women feel shame around their bodies and sexual function. And the idea of squirting can still feel stigmatized and uncomfortable for many women. Plus it requires for her to really be able to let go on every level. So only when she's totally comfortable and relaxed can you even make squirting happen. It's important to remember that our sexual performance and experience is rooted in learnability and adaptability. When trying to bring squirting into your sex life, I highly recommend approaching with a sense of exploration and play. Take the pressure off and focus on the journey rather than the destination. Not only will you both have more fun this way, you're also more likely to accomplish what you're after. Now that we've covered the prerequisites, let's get into the nuts and bolts. Okay, like puddles and waterfalls. Here is my step-by-step -step guide to making a woman squirt. And remember, there's only so much that I can share in a YouTube video, but if you want my masterclass, you can click on the link in the description for my intensive course, Make Her Squirt. That's where you'll find every variable, every scenario, and every technique under the sun. I also get a lot more hands-on in that course, and not just tell you, but show you how it's done. All right, let's begin. Step one, preparation. When it comes to making a woman squirt, knowledge is power. And your first step should always be to educate yourself on female anatomy, including where the G-spot is and how best to stimulate it. Another part of preparation is making sure that both you and your partner are ready to relax and settle into the experience both mentally and physically. This means ensuring that you are in a private and comfortable environment and making sure that you have openly communicated about desires, 
boundaries, and intentions. Make sure that you've got a good quality lube handy and check my recommended products page in the description for all of my favorites. Oh, and I've said it a thousand times, but let me say it one more, trim your nails. Before getting to it, I always recommend that she hydrates because that fluid has got to come from somewhere. It's also a really good idea for her to use the bathroom beforehand, especially if she's worried about urinating. Since squirting can feel a little similar to peeing, having an empty bladder helps immensely. And this is actually another key part of the preparation. She needs to know what to expect when she gets close to squirting. As pleasure and liquid build up in her body, it is totally normal to feel a sensation similar to needing to pee. Lots of women get scared off by this and pull back, which is one of the things that stops them from squirting. So make sure that she knows that it's okay to feel this and that she's ready to let go and allow the experience to take her for a ride. It's always a good idea to put down a sex blanket, something waterproof or towels because if you do it right, there's gonna be a lot of liquid and a really big wet spot. Lastly, lots and lots and lots of foreplay should be a part of your prep. Fool around, get in the mood. I'm talking about massage, fingering, oral, anything that helps her to get fully aroused, and I mean fully aroused and lubricated before you try to go for the fireworks. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. She needs to be all the way turned on. So you might wanna think in terms of hours, not minutes of warm up. And that doesn't necessarily mean hours of oral sex, but flirting seduction, tease, and anticipation can start well before you are in the bedroom together. All right, number two, finding the G-spot. So the G-spot is located about one to two and a half inches deep inside of the vaginal wall facing the front of her body. Just insert a finger or two, depending on what she likes, into her vagina with your palm facing up. Feel around and once you feel a little spongy pad, then you found it. This is the area that you'll be stimulating for the next little while, so take your time and get acquainted. Step number three, Start gently. Even though you've had plenty of foreplay, the key is to always start off slow and gently as you figure out what works for her and what doesn't. The key is to listen to her body. Pay attention to how she's moving. Is she pushing herself into you? Is she pulling back and bracing? Is she moaning and asking you to go harder? Or does it seem like she needs a bit more time to get into the swing of things? When in doubt, you can ask her to tell you when she's ready for you to go harder. Starting soft and building up with pressure and pace allows her to steadily build toward orgasm and in this case, squirting. Also, your hand and wrist will thank you because they're going to be getting a workout when it's time to really go for it. And remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Actually, it's more like a marathon with a sprint at the end, so mentally prepare for that. Which brings me to number four, hone your technique. When it comes to the ins and outs of technique, I do a deep dive in my course, Make Her Squirt, but to cover the basics, there are typically a few types of stimulation that women respond to best. You can move your fingers in a come hither or tapping motion, you can rub them in small circles, or you can rub her G-spot up and down and left and right. Most women respond best to a super vigorous and rapid pulling motion when they're getting ready to squirt. It looks a little bit like this. Bonus if you make that face. Now, like I said before, every woman responds differently. The key here is understanding that different things will work for different women and even at different times. Your job is to try them all, give it enough time to really understand what works for her and what doesn't, and learn from her reactions. Once you find something that works for her, you can begin a rhythmic motion of this technique. You slowly follow her lead, build up intensity, and before you know it, you've got her there. Number five, try a toy. Now, my fifth step is actually more of a bonus tip. It's a reminder that as sexually gifted as you are, you can't do what a toy specifically designed for G-spot stimulation can do, and that's okay because a toy can't do what you can do either. In this instance, sex toys are your friends, and sometimes it's exactly what she needs to take her over the edge. Now, especially if you have any kind of disability or injury that prevents you from using your hands and arms in this capacity or for this long. And the good news is that there are plenty of toys designed specifically for G-spot stimulation. Talk to your partner about bringing in a toy before you do it just so that she knows what's going on and that will help her to relax once you introduce it. Now, when it comes to using a toy, you can either start with it or use it as a finisher when she's ready to go over the edge. And when it comes to using a toy versus your fingers, the same rules of technique and pacing apply. And number six, aftercare. The last step is always is aftercare. Especially when trying something new in bed, it is so important to take time and ground yourself 
yourself and your partner after the act is done. This can look different for different people, but good aftercare always involves two things, communication and grounded connection. Giving her grounded touch like a still firm flat palm over her whole vulva can feel really good after the big release of squirting. Cuddling, spooning, nuzzling can all be great too if that's what she's into in the moment. And when she's floated back down to earth from cloud nine, talk about the experience and the feelings that came up. Give her an opportunity to process without any expectations. You can chat about what worked, what didn't, and how it felt for both of you. And this is true whether she squirts or not. And remember that squirting, especially the first few times that it happens, can release a lot more than just fluid. She might have an emotional release like tears or laughter. And the more that you can be prepared for that, the more you can encourage her to just let it all go. Remind her that you've got her and that you're there with her no matter what. And there you have it. I promise if you follow these steps, you will have a fantastic sexual experience, whether she squirts or not, every single time. Remember, it is about pleasure, exploration, and connection. Some women may not be as ready to let go as much as they have to in order to squirt, and that's okay. The truth is there are many reasons that it might not just be happening in this moment, and as long as you're enjoying the journey, you are winning either way. And if you want my help troubleshooting the most common obstacles to squirting, check out my course, Make Her Squirt, where I tackle the ins and outs, and ins and outs and ups and downs and arounds of all things squirting. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Caitlin B, sex and relationship coach, and I will see you here next time.